The following program discusses sensitive issues. Parents are cautioned that some material may be too candid for younger children. Mike Carducci with Coming Out Ministries, your host for today's program, Pure Choices. I have with me my friend and colleague, Wayne Blakely from Coming Out Ministries, and we want to talk about Jesus being our reparative therapist. Uh, that may not sound uh, very clear to a lot of people out there that may be watching this program. Wayne, give me an idea. What is reparative therapy? Mm, how long do we have? <laughs> Half an hour. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, we want to take a look at uh, the recent law that was passed here in California about um, uh, the reparative therapy not actually being allowed anymore in the state of California. Can you give me just an idea though for our viewers who don't understand what is reparative therapy? That would be uh, in most uh, reparative uh, therapy circles uh, the idea that you can take somebody who is gay and make them straight. Um, what would that be? What would that type of therapy you be? You know, there's all kinds of different therapies involved in uh, the promise is that, is that we can rewire you and get you connected to your appropriate gender. And in doing so, uh, one of the things I recently saw a film, a uh, Christian based film, where one of the uh, partners in the film said, you know, I went through five years of reparative therapy. And so he opens up and shows a book of a guy laying in his father's arms. And the idea is that if you're rocked in your father's arms over a period of time, of therapy time, that you will no longer want to engage in intimacy with a male, a sexual intimacy with a male. Mm -hmm. And so that really kind of ruined him. He went through five years of this. And and you know, he, I was at the film where this, uh, where, where he was actually, um, and I went to him afterwards and I said, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry that you went through that because that's not the kind of therapy that would engage you with Jesus Christ. That's mm -hmm. just trying to, to set you right in some kind of uh, idea about the appropriate sexual uh, function that you're supposed to have. And to me, it's kind of ridiculous that going things from that angle as opposed to going through uh, therapy and getting my life back uh, in right standing with Jesus Christ in, in what my gender is through Him. I see. Um, <clears throat> is it true that some reparative therapy includes um, men that are homosexual to watch heterosexual pornography? Yes, that's one of the therapies involved, and they believe that you, if you, they immerse you in this, um, that you'll finally get it. You know, your mind will get things wired so that you will want to engage in uh, heterosexual sex. Mm -hmm. But if this is being used as a, as a therapy for someone who's coming out of a gay life, into uh, engaging into a relationship with Jesus Christ now, my question is still, why are we putting the cart before the horse? Isn't it true that Jesus says that uh, we only need to fall in love with one person for our life, um, one person of the opposite sex? We don't need to fall in love with the entire uh, population of the opposite sex, and that God will go about putting that person in front of us when it's according to his plan, and not that we should go about this from a therapy standpoint, um, that we're trying to wire somebody so that they want to engage in sexual relationships with the opposite sex. Because if, if you do that and you accomplish that, who's to say that I'm not going to now want to start chasing every woman that I see instead of just being suited for, for one woman? Mm -hmm. And the damage in this that, that has been caused over time is phenomenal. And that's why it's been turned into a law now that 
in the state of California that this kind of therapy is not being allowed. <clears throat> There's been a lot of people who've ended up committing suicide because of these approaches and techniques. All right, so there's definitely a difference between uh, the Christian approach to restoration, right, and and the reparative therapy. So why would the law in California um, have anything to do with Christianity? You know, I don't know. Well, because there there have been people under the uh, the guise uh, or of. Uh, of, of Christianity that have maybe been using some of these techniques um, and thinking that they're doing the right thing. Again, not understanding what it is that Jesus is calling to us to and the healing that is promised through Jesus Christ. There are various ways that we can help people reconnect with Jesus mm -hmm. and with their own uh, masculinity. Um, or femininity, if you're a woman who's wanting to come back and get uh, rewired according to God's plan for you. Mm -hmm. But by the application of some of these bizarre techniques, um, a lot of them aren't done under Christianity at all. That, I guess that's a, one of the main points here is that there's so much therapy out there that is just saying uh, as a society we can go and change somebody's sexual preference and let's just put it into the, the role of what is more accepted so that this person has a more natural life. But I'm looking at it I guess from the standpoint of from Christianity um, it seems odd and awkward to me to put um, sex out there as trying to fix the sex problem rather than trying to bring the person back into an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ where he's in charge. Um, he's my reparative therapist. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's showing me um, by engaging in um, doing, living life according to his will um, he's been able to show me along the way in my relationships now as they have developed with men uh, inside my church, with men that he's now put me in touch with as, as friends um, who are mentors to me now. And through this mentorship, I'm finding out about life, not from a sexual relationship with another man, but from a relationship in which I become a, a friend of his and have a, a morally beautiful relationship with this person instead of the way my life was mapped uh, under the deception of my feelings that were brought on by, by Satan. Okay. So, <clears throat> Wayne, being, you know, members of Coming Out Ministries, we both have been redeemed from homosexuality. Mm -hmm. What's been incredible is I didn't even know that, you know, God could take away the wrong impulses and the wrong desires and to give me healthy ones. And, and you know, we've both been submitted to the process of, of Jesus doing that work that, that He needs to do. And while we didn't have an instantaneous, you know, uh, magic wand over the head, if you would, experience, and, you know, we didn't come up out of the water and ready to date and mate and all of that. But as we've been in that process, it's been more than just behavior modification, which some of reparative therapy seems to mimic is about, you know, one of the things that I did in high school is, you know, I promptly got a girlfriend, you know, to make sure I looked right. And, and I thought that, you know, even if I engaged in, you know, some petting with my girlfriend and, and you know, and it aroused me to a point, I thought, well, maybe if I got married that all of these feelings would go away. And I know that many uh, people who struggle with homosexual tendencies do that hoping that that would be the cure. Mm -hmm. when in actuality it keeps it latent and, and, and what happens is it ends up just kind of busting out of the seams at a later time. And, and so reparative therapy, by what I'm hearing you say, is really um, not dealing with the root cause, which is you know, allowing Jesus Christ to do the rewiring, uh, letting behavior modification or, or certain therapies to tap into some of the reasons why we seek uh, male love but yet what you're saying is that there's a different connection that's vital. And so, Wayne, why is it that, that you say Jesus is your reparative therapist? Well, because God offers um, healing for any of our um, inadequacies. And as I trust in Him and I seek His Word and I begin to walk with Him daily, 
um, I see him beginning to reshape my life. Mm -hmm. And people ask me today, oh, so do you think you'll get married, you know? I mean, it's like everybody wants the proof, you know? And then they'll know for sure that if you get married that, that the healing has taken place. Mm -hmm. And so today I'm not so sure <laughs> that my right wiring is such that God, uh, that his design for me is to, you know, immediately get married and then say, ah, you're fixed now, you're justified. Right. And um, I think that what God has been saying to me is that, Wayne, I want for, for you to come back into a relationship with me, one in which your focus is on me, um, your daily uh, living is centered in me, and don't be surprised if I actually put in front of you the one woman as as a uh, as a gift to you. How, how many women? The one oh, right. woman. Okay, yeah. Just want to make yeah. just want to make sure that we yeah. understand that. As we you know, as a world, as a society mm -hmm. today, we we have this whole uh, sex agenda out there that, that it's like we're all going to be having sex with multiple partners, and it's just flashing at you all over the place. Um, whereas God is saying, you know, this is a gift of intimacy that I will engage you with the person that I want you to. To fall in love with and if I want you to fall in love with this person and I have and your focus is on me um, then then I have a relationship with you in which has now become pure and you have a right wiring to be able to see the person that I want you to fall in love with mm. and these feelings are going to follow they're not going to have to be something that's programmed by a psychologist or a psychiatrist um, for which is hap that's the goal for many of these therapies today and the person entering it may have also just come back to Jesus Christ and so it, because it's out there now I mean this has been a topic big topic today through uh, some of the larger organizations that are dealing with um, the return of the homosexual coming back into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And some of them are ditching the reparative therapy books because they're beginning to see this also has been something that has been causing harm and danger to people uh, that they think that they need to satisfy the, the um, heterosexual type of uh, look uh, the heterosexual behavior, uh, if we can get people engaged in that, then that can again be proof that the conversion is complete. And so I still say to, today, as many people are saying, that the opposite of homosexuality is not heterosexuality, but holiness. And I trust God because I know that God, if he wants me to have a beautiful woman for me to love and he is now trusting that I have engaged in the right relationship with him that very well could be a gift um, a, a fruit of, of my recovery with Jesus Christ but mm -hmm. not one that is orchestrated by mankind right. but that's actually been orchestrated by God. <clears throat> the beauty of God is he is the great physician. He's our creator and our maker. And so Jesus is intimate with every uh, uh, nuance of your life uh, from the moment that you were born, even conceived uh, until now. So as the great physician, he knows the exact therapy that you're in and that you're under. And so until the time that you are to the point where you could be in a healthy relationship with one woman, he knows when that timing is. Yes. And so as we submit to that process, you know, it's about him getting us ready, and, and then when the time is right, it'll be fruitful. It'll Absolutely. be everything that it was meant to be. Our brother said something uh, yesterday that I thought was profound, who's been married. It was Elder Raymond King, and he said, isn't it interesting that it took Solomon a thousand women to get what he gets with just one woman? Mm. And that was the satisfaction, uh, the, the, uh, the intimacy that he was craving. He thought by going to other women, and, and we know that he had beautiful women at his disposal, but we also know that he had men in his life as well. He said, everything that my eye saw, I touched. So we know that Solomon was very degraded sexually by mm. the things that he had beheld. But I love the contrast that our brother said yesterday about the fact that he chased around all of these situations and never found satisfaction, never found the satisfaction that our brother gets with one wife. That's right. So, you know, it's interesting to, uh, to note that, that Jesus offers a different type of therapy than, than reparative therapy. And so... I believe that what we're really trying to differentiate is that reparative therapy isn't like Christianity 
in the sense that Jesus wants to do the work on the inside. And one of the things that we get a lot, Wayne, is when we do our presentations, people look at us and they go, are you sure that you're healed? You know, and, and some of the residue, which is what we call, you know, that, uh, that ability to still have effeminate mannerisms or, or to still have a flair for color or whatever that is, you know, we understand that, that there are scars to healing that when you have a wound, that that wound is really a sign that there's been healing taking place. And so the beauty is, is that Jesus doesn't look on the outside. Jesus looks on the heart. And so I think one of the things that we have to turn around for, for people who may be, you know, watching us and saying that you call that a redeemed homosexual. Mm -hmm. Yes, because Jesus didn't do the work on the outside. Some of those things are, 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 residual from the way that we were born. I accepted femininity as my identity at an early age when my cement was wet, if you would. And so, you know, my identity became stamped in the feminine. Some of those traits will be with me until Jesus comes. But the fact remains that the work that Jesus has done on the inside far exceeds anything that I believe reparative therapy um, would do. Right. You know, some of our, our cultural wiring has been so hardwired that we are, we are not open to looking at some of this fluctuation. Um, society has put us in, in, in a box, you know, that, that masculinity has to look a certain way. Mm. And that if we, don't, uh, if we don't look like that, then we're not who we're, we were meant to be. We're not normal. But, you know, we just came back from Africa and what was normal here was quite different in Africa because in Africa, when you go and you pat a man on the back, he's going to get pretty annoyed with you pretty soon because when you do the, the masculine pat on the back that we do here in the United States, that's a pickup line uh, in Africa saying that you want to involve yourself intimately with that man in yeah. Africa. That's right. Whereas the reverse is happening in Africa, whereas two men will hold hands together and walk down the street together and has nothing to do with uh, wanting to have some kind of sexual intimacy between the two of them. Right. Right. And so it says something to me about how we need to maybe be a little bit more humble um, in, our, in our church environments about how we look at the returning homosexual. Mm -hmm. That we begin to develop relationships that aren't so much based on their feminine or their masculine characteristics, but what is on mm -hmm. the inside, what about, about what Jesus is doing in this person's heart. Yeah. So I think it's important that we look at what King David said, which is that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, there are many feminine type men that are married today that their wives would say, my husband's a great lover. And so we have this thing in society that we've just had this conditioning to think that masculinity means this and femininity means that. And so as, as a church community, if we could come together and allow um, some of this uh, cultural environment uh, that has hardwired us to drop off a bit and just go to the Word of God and, and look at who we are in Jesus Christ, um, not place judgments on one another, and, and allow ourselves to engage with one another without you know, making these prejudgments. It, it would just be amazing to see what's, what's possible. Um, you know, Wayne, I think of, of two contrasting stories or, or um, <clears throat> situations that I had. When I first came back at 40 years old, uh, there was this very humble um, Spanish couple, and they had a 10-year-old daughter. And they let three of us homosexuals into their house. And we were having a Sunday evening Bible study. What was amazing is this humble couple, they didn't even have uh, much in the way, you know, of, of where they lived. It was in a low-income housing area, whatever. But I'm telling you, they gave us everything that they had. They loved us. And I think it finally dawned on them that... I think we're entertaining three homosexuals in our home. And, and now they've shared with me, they're very good friends of mine still, but they shared with me that they were talking about what should we do? We have three homosexuals in our home and a 10 year old daughter. And the husband looked at his wife and he said, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing. They're children of God, just like we are, you know, and they're here for a legitimate reason. And we're studying the word of God and God loves them just, he lo just as he loves us. So in spite of what they were seeing in mannerisms, they recognize us as children of God and worthy of, you know, the grace and, and the gospel. 
But then I'm remembering, you know, back when, you know, many years later, and and you and I were at a conference, and we were uh, talking to someone about uh, our ministry, and the comment was made not to us, but to somebody else that got back to us, that you know, I don't know about those guys. Um, I'm seeing, you know, they still have feminine mannerisms, and I'm thinking that they may still be struggling. Yeah. And how sad, because yeah. again, we tend to look at people on the outside and we make judgments, which isn't right, yeah. you know, and we're trying to assess and, and, and to think, you know, where people are at or whatever in their experience, and yet we're called as Christians to love each other and to not make those kind of judgments. And so, you know, the word residue again comes up that, that some of those mannerisms we can't change. We're not in charge of that. And, and even if we could, that would not be a total sign of the healing that comes right. from within, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it, it hangs on me a little bit when I, when I hear things like that. It, that instantly had made my heart sink a bit. And I went, oh, well, really? Well, where does it take you, Come Wayne? On. Oh, it takes me back um, mm -hmm. to my childhood. That's it right. takes me back to the rejection, to yep. the being beat up, uh, to not fitting the mold. Um, and I thought, wow, that's really interesting that a Christian, uh, a man of God, would make this observation. And I said to the person who shared this with me, I said, oh, I said, he needs to come to one of our seminars. <laughs> that's right. You know, because it's not necessarily the outward appearance that changes when someone returns to Jesus. It's not that I went under the water gay and I came up straight and all mas masculine and buff and ready to meet the world, you know, uh, or that I need to be married off as, that that, as though that were the solution to, to well, the problem. Well, we know that many men that are married struggle with homosexuality. That's so right. we know on the outside that's not a cure, right? That's right. So, Wayne, let's bring it around now. What is the cure? Well, the, again, the, the cure comes through through Jesus Christ. Amen. And, That's right. You know, it's not uh, it's the the behaviors. You know, are are things that I think people can look at. Um, yeah, you, if you have a desire and and you want to, you know, learn to how to go butch it up. You know, you feel free, <laughs> but but don't let. But if it's not successful, yeah. you know, to your image, you know, that doesn't mean that God loves you any less or, or that, that you're the not, work isn't being done. Absolutely, right. Your your genuine relationship in, in Jesus Christ is not so much through the characteristic. And, and I think of, uh, of the one person who has an, a major, a major um, uh, testimony about this is, is Cy Rogers, you know, and, and he's uh -huh. really great at, about joking <clears throat> about his femininity and helping people see that the genuineness of Jesus Christ flows through him, not necessarily through some characteristic that's supposed to be reshaped. Right. I, I love to tell that story, and I'll tell people who've never seen him. Cy Rogers is a person who actually was about to have a sex change. He lived as a woman for a couple of years. And uh, just before he was about, I think he was just a few months from having his sex change, he'd given his heart to the Lord, dressed as a woman, and the Lord still saw his potential. He saved him and redeemed him. And so he said, Lord, I give you permission to work in my life. If you don't want me to have a sex change, let me know. And two days, two weeks later, his whole program was shut down. They were no longer doing the sex change operations at his hospital and he said wow the Lord shut down the whole program just for me but his mannerisms still were incredibly feminine from living that way for so long and then um, after he's been in ministry and he's been in ministry for 20 some years married with a daughter and I think he's a grandfather now but um, people will actually come up to him and they look at him and they go you're the example of a redeemed homosexual. He goes, yes. And they go, well, why aren't you more butch? And he goes, I am, which <laughs> is hysterically right, right, right. funny to me. But what that did is that helped me to recognize that, that even as a hairdresser, and I know, Wayne, that you even love doing floral arrangements, mm -hmm. which to me are probably the two most high profile uh, gay <laughs> occupations that you could possibly have. That's right. But God gave us those attributes. Yeah. We have that talent. And, and that's not, to me, a definition of femininity. It, it's still a talent of God because Jesus decorated the fields with flowers. He's the ultimate florist, if you ask me. And then, look, he gave our heads, you know, he covered our, well, some of our heads with hair. And, and so, <laughs> to me, I have to recognize that even those attributes, they're not defined by who I am. But I believe that they're still gifts of God. And I think that we have to move past and outside of those stereotypes that we have yeah. to recognize that everyone, no matter what their talents are, we're still children of God and that's no indication of the work that He's doing within us. Yeah, you know, I have a 
A, a, as you know, I have a, a friend that I talked to you about now who is a, a new friend, heterosexual friend, that is kind of, uh, I'm getting the rewiring right about this same gendered friendship today. And he said something about my talents and, and that I should be, uh, be, you know, very open and out there with my talents and, and live there, there for people to see, you know, my ability to design and do various things. And, and I said, well, I don't know, I kind of played that down a little bit because I don't want to be judged, you know. And he says, oh, come on. You know, he says, I, you know, and he's very masculine and, and he does uh, photography and designs his own sets and gets into some creativity and stuff. And he says, I wouldn't let what anybody thinks of you stop you you know you need to to find out who you are in Jesus Christ and use the gifts that God has given you and not let the world you know bring this oppression on you or try to make you feel bad mm, beautiful <clears throat> so Wayne if you would what has been the result of your personal research on this topic and how successful is reparative therapy well, you know, I did look up statistics on this uh, for quite a while and found that um, I found a study, one of the major studies that was done um, showed that 35% uh, of the people before going into reparative therapy had um, tried suicide. And then uh, I think it was 20 some percent uh, during the therapy um, that tried uh, to commit suicide, and again the the number elevated again after after the therapy, and so that said to me that the therapy wasn't too terribly successful, and that the focus was probably again in the wrong place instead of being on behavior. Um, the, the focus should really be on Jesus Christ because Jesus loves you. Jesus is going to reaffirm your importance to him regardless of your uh, masculine or feminine characteristics. And so um, I don't, I'm not a big proponent of reparative therapy today and I feel really bad for a lot of people who have a bad um, picture of, of Christianity. Uh, because of reparative therapy and think that that we want people to fit a certain mold and so it's given a bad name you know to Christianity a lot of gay people will associate reparative, reparative therapy with Christianity even if it's not um, administered from from a Christian so uh, my the synopsis uh, and or the the result actually that I have come up with is that um, Jesus is my reparative therapist and I believe that the healing that's taking place through him is more complete that what, than what it would be if I went into a secular um, psychology therapy. I agree. You know, having worked in, in the psych department uh, at a hospital for over 10 years, you know, I saw this revolving door of how, you know, many of the therapies uh, that, that weren't complete or weren't totally successful, I believe we're missing that component of what Jesus can restore and, and redeem in our lives. I know that when I accepted Jesus as my Savior, I never chose to be straight. I just chose Jesus Christ. That's all I could do. I couldn't change my attractions. I didn't even want to. But as I walked legitimately with Jesus, He started to address it. He started to work on it. And He's given me that freedom now that I never even thought was possible. So Wayne, thank you for uh, sharing uh, your, um, your thoughts about reparative therapy and, and a lot of the information. We hope that you've enjoyed our program today here on Pure Choices, and we invite you to come back to hear more of Coming Out Ministries in the future. 